Hello, everybody. Welcome to Ms. McGuire online video lecture. Today, we're covering cancer genetics and genomics. This video lecture will be divided into two parts because this PowerPoint is um, pretty long. So let's go ahead and begin. Uh, learning outcomes. After um, studying this chapter, students will be able to list the characteristics of a cancerous tumor, explain how loss of cell cycle control causes cancer, explain how most cancers are not inherited but are genetic, describe cancer cells, explain how cancers can arise from stem cells, distinguish between driver and passenger mutation in cancer, and discuss how mutation in several genes drive cancer. Um, we have more um, to cover in this chapter. So you will be able to describe what can happen to chromosomes in cancer cells, explain how mutations in oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes cause or increase susceptibility to cancer, discuss environmental factors that increase risk or cause cancer, explain how cancer diagnosis and treatment have become more specific and increasingly based on genetics and genomics. So we're gonna start with introduction. Cancer is a type of disease in which certain cells become able to divide more often, leading to abnormal growth that is called a tumor, or disruption of the proportion of blood cell types. For example, increase the concentration of white blood cells, leukemia, that is called liquid tumor. One in three people will develop cancer. Disturbance of cell cycle is caused by inherited cancer susceptibility genes or from environmental exposure. Researchers have sequenced the genomes of tumors to understand genetic changes that cause and accompany a cancer. So if you see over here, guys, if one in three people will develop cancer, that tell us that we really need to um, increase awareness of um, this disease um, and possibly um, allow more of uh, fundings and money in the cancer research and development of new medication and new treatment to help people to deal with this um, very uh, dangerous um, condition. Now, uh, so what really caused uh, cancer? Well, cancer is caused by uh, mutations mutations or uh, epigenetic changes in your DNA. So mutation may affect the expression of genes, but so may epi epigenetic influences, such as DNA myelination and chromatin remodeling. Cellular pathway affected by cancer causing gene mutations. Mutation in cancer causing genes can interfere with cell fate, cell survival, and genome maintenance. Now, if we have cancer-causing genes, and we will talk in a minute what those genes are. So if we have mutation in these genes that might affect differentiation of stem cells. So usually when stem cells uh, differentiate into mature cells, like if they differentiate in your uh, fibroblast or muscle cells or nerve cells. They either do not divide differentiated cells, um, most, di most differentiated cells like muscle cells, nerve cells, they don't divide. Some cells that are differentiated like fibroblast, for example, they have limited number of divisions. But when we have mutation in those, in the genes, then differentiated cells might continue divide division and form tumors. Of course, stem cells themselves can form tumors. Another thing, when cells have mutations, well, DNA inside cells have mutation, usually cells go through process called apoptosis. So they destroy themselves. 
So if you have cell, or your skin cell, for example, and you have DNA damage in the cell, the cell will just destroy it itself. And that will prevent uh, this cell from division and forming tumor. However, if we have mutation in cancer-causing genes, the cell might escape apoptosis. And cells that are not supposed to divide because their DNA is damaged, they will continue division and form tumor. Another thing that affect um, cells if uh, they have mutation in gene um, in cancer causing genes is uh, it will it can increase their abilities to survive in the presence of different toxins or oxygen species that usually they destroy your regular cells. Right? So that's what can happen if um, a mutation occur in a specific gene that uh, make you more susceptible to a cancer or cancer-causing genes. Hmm. Now, when we have specialized cells, now what are specialized cells? Well, specialized cells are a mature cell of your body, like your muscle cells, your nerve cells, your liver cells, your kidney cells, uh, your skin cells. Now, some of the specialized cells, as I already mentioned, they're not supposed to divide at all, but some do divide. Uh, however, if they divide, they must follow a schedule of mitosis. So they, um, they divide when it's needed and as many times as needed. But if a cell escapes normal control over its division rate, it forms a growth called a tumor. Now, tumor is benign if it does not spread or invade surrounding tissues. A tumor in cancerous, uh, oh, I'm sorry, tumor is cancerous or malignant if it infiltrates nearby tissues. So they invade tissue nearby. Now, what are metastases? Metastases are tumor spreads to other parts of the body via blood or lymph vessels, makes a cancer lethal and it's difficult to detect. Um, actually, if, uh, if a patient um, only um, start receiving treatment when his or her cancer is already metastasized, then the chances to survive decreases very rapidly, right? So even if it's a malignant tumor, uh, it, it's a nearby tissue, but there is no metastasis to other part of the body through the blood of lymph, then prognosis is way better than a cancer that already metastasized. So for example, if somebody has breast cancer, now that tumor, developed in the breast tissue. It might invade nearby tissues like uh, some um, nearby muscles and lymph nodes. But when these cancer cells travel through the blood or lymph to, for example, bones like sacrum, this is very common area for metastasis for breast cancer. Then those cancerous cells that was formed in the breast tissue, if they travel to a patient bone and start growing tumor in the patient bone, that's what metastasis are. Now metastasis can uh, invade different parts and organs. Um, people can have metastasis in liver, in bone, in brain, um, uh, stomach, GI tract, Right, so that doesn't matter where this cancer was formed, right? Through the blood, it can travel through entire body and it will be difficult to detect. You cannot surgically remove it because you don't know where this tumor will regrow, right? And plus this cancer also might be more resistant to radiation and chemotherapy. Now, what are carcinogens? Carcinogens are substances that cause cancer. Most are mutagens. That means they damage 
DNA and cause DNA mutations. Uh, level of uh, cancer. Um, so um, we can uh, we we have diagnosis of the cancer on the whole body level. We have a disrupt pathway on a cellular level. So for example, over here we have skin cancer cells that divide faster than surrounding cells. And we can have alteration on a genome level. So now why these cells divide faster? That might be because of the mutation in DNA or epigenetics. All right, so we have alternation of DNA and that will cause disruption of pathway. Um, cells will divide out control, form the tumor, and this tumor will be diagnosed on the whole body level. Okay, now about these cancer genes. There are three categories of cancer genes, oncogenes, more than 100. They cause cancer if expressed when they normally wouldn't be in healthy cells or are overexpressed. So oncogenes uh, are dangerous and cause cancer when they overexpressed. Uh, they affect um, uh, effect of mutation in oncogenes are typically dominant. Another type of genes, tumor suppressor genes, more than 30. They cause cancer when they are deleted or inactivated. So that makes sense, right? Tumor suppressor means you suppress a tumor. You doesn't allow this tumor to grow. So you have a genes that produce proteins that slow down the growth of tumor. Now, if those genes are deleted or inactivated, you don't have a protein that would suppress the tumor so the tumor continue to grow. Effect of a mutation are recessive. And we have DNA repair genes. They're responsible for repairing damaged DNA molecules in cells. Mutation in these genes can interfere with the gene repair process and result in persistent mutation that can lead to cancer development. Most DNA repair disorders are inherited in a single gene fashion and are quite rare. They typically cause diverse and widespread tumors. Right, so here's the three category of the genes, again, that we call uh, cancer genes. One, if they overexpress, right, they will promote cell division and growth of the tumors. Other, if they are not expressed, then they cannot suppress the tumor. So tumor continue to grow. And another group, uh, those are genes that produce proteins that will repair the DNA. So if DNA is damaged by mutagens, uh, by UV radiation, uh, by toxins, chemicals, or even epigenetic changes. Uh, if we have those proteins that will repair the DNA, right, then um, cell, um, so if you repair the DNA, cell can continue to function normally, right? But if we don't, if we, um, we cannot repair those DNA, then cell with a DNA mutation and uh, possibly in a cancer-causing genes will continue to divide and form tumor. Now, these genes are usually inherited, right? And if we have this, uh, the, let's say, mutation in DNA repair genes, or we have absence of this DNA repair genes, that cancer is uh, very diverse and widespread. However, thankfully, it's a quite rare. <laughs> Right, okay, so that's good news. All right, so now we're gonna look at a loss of cell control. The most fundamental characteristic of cancer is the underlying disruption of cell cycle. So we develop cancer when the cell cycle fail to function normally. Many types of cancer result from faulty checkpoints. Timing, rate, and number of cell division depends on protein growth factors, signaling molecule from outside the cell, and transcription factors from within a cell. 
Now, so cell cycle, if you remember from previous lectures, is the uh, orderly events um, that start from the formation of the cell, then cell uh, growth, um, performance function, replicates its DNA, and then it's divided. Right? Through this cell cycle, we have checkpoints to check if cell is functioning correctly, if DNA is replicated correctly, if uh, mitosis is uh, proceeding correctly. Right? So if this uh, faulty, if we have faulty checkpoints, then cells that are supposed to go through apoptosis, they continue division. Right? So that's, that's what it says um, over here. Uh, the diversity of the checkpoints that control cell cycle revealed how cancer can, oh, I'm sorry, the, not diversity, discovery of this checkpoint that controls the cell cycle revealed how cancer can begin. Mutation in the gene that slows the cell cycle can lead to inappropriate mitosis. So if we have a gene that slow down the cell cycle, then it's good, right? So we don't want our cells to start division out of control. But if this gene has a mutation, so it's not functioning gene anymore, right? Then we cannot slow down the cell cycle and then will lead to mitosis. Failure to pause in order to repair DNA can allow a mutation in an oncogene or tumor suppressor gene to persist. Now, uh, we also have uh, genes that allow to pause the cell cycle and check for integrity of DNA and, if needed, repair the DNA. So if we cannot pause the cell cycle and repair DNA, uh, and if this DNA mutation is in oncogene or tumor suppressor genes, then, um, then those cel cells, we cannot repair DNA we cannot destroy the cells, so these cells with mutations, they continue to divide. All right, so here's our cell uh, cycle and checkpoints. And as we already um, mentioned over here, so here where a new cell is formed, and then cell goes to G1 phase, then S phase, G2 phase, and this is M phase or mitosis, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis, right? So we can have a DNA. Uh, so we have over here DNA damage checkpoint that will slow um, cell cycle. Um, because over here, um, we have a checkpoint that inhibits cell cycle until, um, so it can stop the cell cycle. It can slow down the, uh, the cell cycle, or it can stop the cell cycle in G2 phase. So we can stop it in G1, slow down in AS, stop in G2, and we will check for uh, DNA damage. And if DNA is damaged, right, then we can repair it. Um, uh, we have um, at the end of G2 phase, we have apoptosis checkpoints. So if you have, um, uh, so we have a protein called a surviving, it's need to accumulate. So if it's accumulates, that's it's, it's good, right? Then mitosis uh, will pr uh, proceed. So the cell will divide. If you don't have accumulation of surviving, uh, and surviving means cell will survive, right? It will divide. So if you don't accumulate surviving, then uh, cell will go through apoptosis. So it's never will divide. So it's another checkpoint. Then we have spindle assembly check checkpoints in metaphase and between metaphase and anaphase over here. Then we will see how this uh, mitotic spindle is assembled. Are we going to separate chromosome uh, correctly or not? So is spindle built? Do chromosomes attach to the spindle? Are chromosomes aligned down the equator? So if everything of following the proper uh, steps, then cells continue to anaphase, telophase, cytokinesis, and we have two new cells. However, if uh, any of this, now what, what are those checkpoints? Checkpoints are proteins, right? So proteins that synthesize at a precise time during cell life. And if you have genes that are damaged and those uh, checkpoints are not formed, then cell escaping the checkpoints and uh, cells that has DNA damage, 
the cells that doesn't have a uh, normal uh, spindle or chromosomes are not attached correctly, those cells continue to divide. And those are faulty cells, those cells that cannot perform function correctly, those cells that might develop um, cancer and uh, metastasize to a different part of the body. And this is, I think this image show us the two cancerous cells that are dividing. So by the way, let me see what, what it says. The photo captures the um, fibrosarcoma, fibrosarcoma cancer cells um, that um, they divide over here. So that's what this image is. Okay, so next. Uh, cancer sends a cell down a pathway of unrestricted cell division. Um, so here's our stem cell. Now the stem cell has ability to divide and uh, renew themselves. So this arrow show you that this stem cells will divide and make new stem cell. And um, another stem cells will, um, you know, differentiate as it's supposed to in fibroblast, for example, let's say that stem cell is going to give us fibroblast. This is differentiated cell, and it has limited time of division, 50 division limit for fibroblast. Or it can differentiate, for example, in a cell like neurons that no further cell division. So that's a normal process over here. Stem cells renew themselves. They differentiate into um, cells that don't divide or have limited number of division. However, if stem cells um, has a mutation in the DNA and it became a cancerous cell, then it's continue into cells with no division limits. And that's what will cause uh, cancer. Uh, Another way how cells can become cancer, uh, cancerous, it's a loss of control of telomere lens. So that also can contribute to cancer. Now, what is telomeres? Telomeres are chromosome tips. So if you have a chromosome, on the tip of chromosome, you have a sequence of nucleotides that do not code for any protein. So that's a, called telomeres. But what they do, they protect chromosome from breaking. Um, now, um, gametes, right, gametes, keep telomeres um, long using telomerase. And normal specialized cells have telomerase turned off. So this is the enzyme that keeps these ends or tips of chromosome long. Why? Because if you have long telomere, you can, uh, cells continue to divide. DNA continue to replicate. Right, uh, so when telomeres became shorter, the DNA cannot replicate and cells cannot divide. So of course, for gametes, we need cells to divide. So we we have this telomer telomerase. When cells are specialized, like a muscle cell, nerve cells, or even um, some a fibroblast, this uh, enzyme turned off and it limits cell division. Cancer cells turns telomeres back on right, how they do it, how they turn this back on. And then, you know, we, we don't fully understand, but cancer cells can turn them back on, telomeres extend and release the break on rapid cell division. So when telomere is long, DNA continue to replicate, cells continue to divide. And the cancer cells has this ability to, uh, to turn back on this uh, enzyme telomerase that prevents telomeres from shortening. Okay, uh, HeLa cells. Cancer cells can, can divide continuously if given sufficient nutrient and space. Uh, cervical cancer cells of a woman named um, Henrietta Lux, who died in 1951, vividly illustrate the hardness of these cells. Her cells persist today as a standard cultures in many research laboratories. These HeLa cells divide so vigorously that when they contaminate culture uh, of other cells, 
they soon take over. So that's the point of this cancer cells. They, if you give them nutrient, you give them space, they will divide continuously, All right? So if we can stop this division, if we can make those drugs that will uh, trigger uh, maybe telomerase or any other um, uh, any other chemicals that would prevent cancerous cells from division, we will be closer to finding cure for many type of cancers. Okay. Hmm. So let me go back because I want only, okay, I'm on, on 15. So I still need to cover quite a bit. So let's just um, speed up a little bit. So inherited versus sporadic cancer. Cancer is genetic, but not usually inherited. That means that changes in your genes, changes in your DNA cause cancer, but it doesn't mean that you inherited this, necessarily inherited those mutations and those changes. So only about 10% of cases result from inheriting a cancer susceptibility allele from a parent. So we have two types of uh, mutation, germ line mutation. Um, then when we have mutation in gametes, egg and sperm. So cancer susceptibility passed on to offspring. So if it's germ line mutation, then this mutation will be passed to, um, to uh, next generations. Mutation is present in every cell of the individual. So if it's germline mutation, so for example, if female has an egg and this egg has a mutation in cancer-causing genes, right, then this, you know, mutation is passed uh, from generation to generation. And then in the person who developed from this egg and sperm, from the zygote, this mutation will be in every cell. Cancer develops when second somatic mutation occurs. Rare tend to strike earlier in life than sporadic cancers, right? So even if you, uh, somebody inherits this germline mutation from a mother, they still need this mutation in a, another uh, allele, right? In the second somatic mutation, you need to uh, to develop cancer. So the... the um, the patient inherited susceptibility or person inherited susceptibility, but if the second somatic mutation never happens, this uh, person will not develop cancer, right? And thanks goodness, those are rare uh, mutation. And if somebody has this germline mutation in cancer-causing genes, they will develop cancer earlier in life. Um, right, okay. Uh, other 90% uh, of cancer are sporadic. Uh, that means it's isolated event, not part of familiar pattern. So they happen um, without any, uh, uh, any. Um, so we, we don't have in a family, we, this cancer doesn't run in the family. So it happened spontaneously. Those are somatic mutations. They occur sporadically in non-sex cells result from a single dominant mutation or two recessive mutation in the same gene and cancer susceptibility not passed on to offsprings. So if we have mutation in germline, germline mutation, those will be passed to the offsprings. And a, a mutation and cancer will be found, uh, well, this mutation will be present in every cell. If it's a somatic mutation, it occurs sporadically, spontaneously in the somatic cells, it will not be passed to generation. And um, it's either one dominant or two recessive mutation in the same gene, because we always have uh, two alleles for every gene. Okay, so here uh, shows our germline inherited cancer, and you can see every cell of the body is affected, or we have sporadic mutation that affected only um, some cells like in this example, cells of lung. Uh, so cancer begins at the genetic and cellular levels. 
if not halted by the immune system. So if your immune system cannot catch it in time and destroy those cancer cells, then cancer may spread through tissues and eventually take over organs and organ systems. Now, characteristic of cancer cells, they look different from a normal cell. Cell surface has different types and or number of antigens. It contains heritable mutations. They are transplantable, can be transplanted into other tissues or organism and continue to grow. So the cancer cells, if you take cancer cells from one individual and transplant it to another individual, can you believe it or not, but it can continue to grow. It's uh, de-differentiated. That means they're less specialized than normal cell types, can potentially develop into different types of cells, and invasiveness, have surface structures that enable them to squeeze into any space. Um, also, an, an, a characteristic of cancer cells include lack of contact inhibition. That means that if you have cells, for example, so if you have cells, and if these cells uh, divide, and uh, for example, they are in a petri dish. So when they divide and they touch the edges of the petri dish, they should stop division. That's called contact inhibition. So that means, you know, uh, not enough space, right? Uh, so they need to stop division. Cancer cells, however, lack contact inhibition. Um, cancer cells can move. Um, mutation affects their cytoskeleton, actin filaments, and cells um, can move, that your normal cells should not move through your body. Metastasize, they move to a new location in the body. Induce angiogenesis, that's the formation of new capillaries around cancerous cells. They can secrete hormones that encourage their own growth, and it's in you ploy it so they miss or can have extra chromosomes. So that's a characteristic of cancerous cells. So they're different. They have a different number of antigens on the surface. They uh, can be uh, transplanted into other tissue or even organism, continue to grow. They're less differentiated. They invade spaces. They can move. They uh, can metastasize. They grow blood vessels around them. So those blood vessels, capillaries, can bring more nutrients, no, uh, more oxygen to cancer cells. So they continue to divide. They secrete hormones that increase their own growth, and they might have extra or missing chromosome. So that's a horrible picture of melanoma over here. I cannot even look at it. Um, okay, so uh, origins of cancer cells. Factors that influence whether or not cancer develops include how specialized the initial cell is and the location of that cell in the tissue. So will the cell be developed into cancer or not depends on is the cell fully specialized or not and where it's located. Cancer can begin at a cellular level in at least four ways. Activation of stem cells, that produce cancerous cells, so stem cells can produce cancer. D, differentiation, so cancerous cells do not differentiate. Increase in proportion of a tissue that consists of stem cells and progenitor cells and faulty tissue repair. And so let's look at this um, in a more detail. So the first is um, cancer that can descend from a stem cells, as we said over here, right? So the previous one, so that activation of stem cells. So cancer from a stem cells. A stem cells that yields slightly differentiated daughter cells that retain the capacity of cell renewal. So if you know stem cells, they divide. So if these stem cells do not differentiate, if they became a daughter cells that continue division, that means self renewal process that can develop cancer. A specialized cell or a specialized cell that loses some of its feature and can divide as well. Remember, I told you specialized cells should not divide or they should have limited number of divisions. Well, if stem cells start dividing, 
right, um, without control, or stem cells specialized, but that specialized cell continue to divide, then we form tumor. Cancer stem cells produce both cancer cell and abnormal specialized cells found in brain, blood, and per epithelial cancers. So over here, just show us that, um, see, that's a normal process. So here we have a stem cell, right? And these stem cells can divide. So this arrow shows that it will divide and cell renew. That means you pretty much never uh, run out of these cells. And these cells can divide because it has this protein, CD133+. Uh, right, so that's a protein that is active. Uh, it's it's synthesized and cell divide. Now this cell not only self renew, it's also differentiate into early progenitor cells. And you see those early progenitor cells they divide. They still have this CD one three three protein, and then it differentiate into late progenitor cell. And now look what happened. This protein CD one three three is turned off. Now that means these cells cannot divide anymore. What they can do, they will differentiate into uh, um, cells like, for example, neuron, astrocytes, oligodendrocytes, and neither of these cells will divide, right? Those mature brain cells, all of them has the CD133 protein turned off, so no further division. However, this is what can happen with their cancer cell. Well, first cancer cell, can um, differentiate into daughter cells that are uh, very similar to a stem cell, and they continue to, to divide, and they make a progenitor cells that continue to divide. So you see there is no end of division. We have CD133 proteins still on. Uh, or this cancer cell can, um, uh, let's say it's differentiate into progenitor cell, right? then into, um, so this is kind of, no, it's, it's kind of like, okay, that's a normal process. Progenitor cell, then late progenitor cells, um, protein is off and um, normal mature cells. However, the same progenitor cell can form tumor and uh, produce abnormal daughter cells that will continue to divide. So this is called cancer derived from a stem cells, and this is cancer derived from a progenital cells, right? So either uh, stem cells start forming tumor or stem cells forming the, oh, over here, progenitor cells and progenitor cells form the tumor, right? Okay, so this is how uh, cancer can be developed. But you can see um, the process starts with the stem cell because that, that does make sense because stem cells divide rapidly. There's a whole uh, function and the reason we have the stem cells so they can cell renew, they can differentiate into cells that uh, became old or non-functioning so we can replace those cells or we can uh, continue to grow when we still young. Right, but when those stem cells form tumor or progenitor cells start forming tumor instead of mature differentiated cells, that would cause cancer. Cancer may also begin when cells lose some of their distinguishing characteristic as mutation occur when they divide. Or cells on a road to cancer may begin to express uh, stimness genes that override signals to remain specialized. So here we're gonna look uh, uh, further what can happen. So remember we said like, okay, so if uh, stem cell differentiate into mature cell in a neuron, we have CD133 protein that is turned off. However, they can, these cells can turn back, right? So it's can kind of turn back to a late progenitor cells and early progenitor cells and then cancer cells and uh, start forming tumors. So that's that what it says um, over here, that cancer may begin with cells that lose some of their distinguished characteristics. Um, so they, they were differentiated, but now they lost this characteristic because of some mutation and they can start dividing if they're not supposed to divide. Or, um, um, over here, uh, it says that um, 
they start expressing gene that overrides signals to remain specialized. So they're not specialized anymore. So this is a specialized cell. It now it's there are some mutations that doesn't allow them to stay in nerve cells and turn them back into progenitor cells. Another possible origin of cancer may be a loss of balance at the tissue level in favor of cells that can divide continually or frequently, like a population growing faster if more of its members are on a reproductive age. When a mutation over time shifts the balance to create more stem and progenitor cells, the extra cells pile up and a tumor forms. So here I show you, um, so mostly we have like uh, differentiated cells, right? So this is our differentiated cells, all these are yellow. And we have still this stem progenitor cells. Now we need this stem cell because if this cell or this cell or this cell is damaged, then a progenitor cell will divide and replace damaged cells. And you can see proportion over here is 6.6%. .6%. Now, uh, when we have cell division, we have mutations, and now we increase the proportion of stem cells. So now it's 16.6% .6 compared to normal differentiated cells. And um, then those uh, stem cells divide, form an uh, aggregation of cells, abnormal growth, and now look, the proportion even increase even more, 26.6%. And that's uh, another way for tumor um, to, to be formed. Um, uncontrolled tissue repair uh, also can cause cancer. Um, so here we have um, uh, epithelium and we have some injury, right? So for example, you cut yourself and you have a stem cells um, that um, that injury will um, activate uh, the stem cells. Stem cells will divide and um, replace the damaged cells, right? So we have normal repair. However, if you have chronic injury, we have persistent activation of stem cells, right? So here we have our epithelial cell, we have resting stem cells, we have activated stem cells. And we, if we continue activate stem cells, then they can overgrow and form uh, a tumor. Right? So this, so you can see there is several ways for cancer to, uh, to be developed. So if we, um, if you go back over here, we can say that um, just to recall uh, origin of um, cancer cells is the activation of stem cells, right? Uh, D, differentiation, when we have differentiated cells. So activation of stem cells, we looked over here, how we can activate a stem cells and they can form tumor. Then D, differentiation, this is, uh, we look at this uh, picture, when we have differentiated cells and we de-differentiated, so it became progenitor cells and cancerous cell. Uh, increase in proportion of tissue, increase in proportion in tissue, we looked over here. So we increase the proportion of stem cells and they can form tumor. Or the last um, way how we can um, get a, uh, cancer cells is faulty tissue repair. And we look at on the last slide over here, when we said when we have chronic injury and we continue to activate stem cells, they can uh, overgrow to produce cancerous tumor. Okay, so this is the last slide for the first part of this chapter, and um, I will record the rest of this PowerPoint next time. So um, thank you very much for watching, and I hope it was helpful.